Aside from knowing Lucifer is a psychotic demon who deceives humans into thinking he wants to help them achieve their full potential, what else do you know about Lucifer? How much do you know about his schemes and antics in the world? Truth is, I realize that nobody really knows all they should know about Lucifer, even your most learned religious leaders. So that's why today I thought it wise to bring up this interview. So guys, this Lucifer interview happened sometime five years ago, but has often been revisited severally because of how significant it is. In this chilling interview, Lucifer made some shocking revelations about his ambitions and how he actualizes them. And guess what? I'll show you how these things are playing out right in front of us. Lucifer's motivation to do evil lies in making people reveal their deepest desires. Whatever a man's purpose is, he cannot read it from their mind. But once men speaks it carelessly, Lucifer then takes hold of it and thwarts it so that it doesn't end up challenging his kingdom. He often uses this to manipulate humans and exposes their weaknesses. He enjoys tempting people to sin, especially those who are religious or merely moralistic. He plaques their minds with excess lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes. First, let's talk about your reign. Now, you've had a fairly long one. What would you attribute to your success and popularity? Oh, that's easy. Every generation is the same. I appeal to their lust and ego. I offer all the sex, wealth, and fame a person could want. Do as thou wilt has been my campaign slogan from the start. And my campaign platform hasn't changed either. I run on the same three issues every generation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Lucifer knows that humans are free to do whatever they want as long as they are not willing to be honest or responsible enough for their actions. He doesn't really care about the consequences of these actions. All he wants is to make them think and believe that God is unfair and unjust. To do this, he focuses on making people have a complicated relationship with God, who he believes is the cause of his fall from grace to eternal punishment. This is true for many today who find it hard to serve God or do his will. People find it very easy to abuse and castigate God when they face some difficulty in their lives. At this point, some people even lose faith and you'll often hear them saying God does not exist. When you say lust of the flesh, what exactly do you mean? Come on now, what do I mean? Isn't it obvious? I just use humans' own innate physical desires against them. And since sexual desire seems to be the most powerful, I usually run with that. Now, I didn't create sex, but I must say I've done a superb job at perverting it. Another way Lucifer strikes is by intensifying people's sinful desires for physical pleasure, such as sex, drugs, alcohol, food, or money. He often exploits these weaknesses by offering individuals what they crave or seducing them with his charm and charisma. He lets them indulge in the lust of the flesh to satisfy their needs and wants without regard for the feelings or well-being of others. Lucifer is so cunning that he makes people believe that the lust of the flesh is natural and harmless, persuading them not to feel ashamed or guilty about it. However, in the end, he places them in the same position he is in, fallen from grace. And I've got two more Pride Initiative campaigns I'd like to introduce in the near future. Hmm. Really? I'm guessing you probably want me to ask you what they are, right? Well, first, it's abortion pride. Now, I think we can pull this off. Society is definitely ready for it. I've enlisted to help a Planned Parenthood to work with marketing and promotions. And all we'll have to do is silence the so-called abolitionists and pro-lifers because the rest of the church doesn't seem to care. Another way you can spot the antics of Lucifer is when you find yourself with an intense attitude of arrogance, vanity, and self-importance. Lucifer often exploits this weakness by flattering your ego and inflating your pride. He makes you think that abortion pride is justifiable and beneficial and that you should not find anything wrong with it. By being arrogant and carnal, he can keep you trapped in endless circles all your life. This is worse when he makes you think you don't have anything to lose. You see what's going on today. We have been swayed to assent to ungodly policies such as the abortion bill. And as exactly as Lucifer has stated, we've been fooled into thinking it is the right move. But we stand to lose out a whole lot spiritually because of abortion pride. Let's change gears for a minute and talk about policy. Some may consider your policies destructive, dangerous even. Uh, what would be your response to that? What would you say to your detractors? All of my policies are aimed to do one of three things, either steal, kill, or destroy. And if it's not doing one or all three of those things, then it's not in my agenda and I'm not promoting it. Lucifer knows that God cannot stand anything that's not true, 
so he plants lies and deceptive policies in the hearts of men. He influences the sinful tendencies of humans to lie, cheat, and manipulate others for their own selfish benefit and agenda. Lucifer often deploys this weakness by influencing and inflating the desire for corruption and dishonesty in politicians, business people, and people in power. He uses deceptive policies to make them defy the rules and laws that are godly. He makes sure they do not like these types of policies, but rather chose ungodly ones. Once he can deceive them into thinking they are not enough for themselves, they start hating on others. Okay, so now you get why we can't help but lie so many times, and even refer to some as white lies. Not impressive at all. So you mean to tell me that your policies are intentionally racist against black people? Racist? <laughs> this has got to be the best law I've ever come up with. I can't believe that humans still believe they're different races. But to answer your question, yes. It has always been my policy to target and isolate a group of people. You can see that Lucifer likes to ride on the human psychology of racism to cause havoc and destroy peaceful coexistence. Yes. He often does this by inciting and exposing the partiality in humans, especially those who claim to be righteous, virtuous, or privileged. He leads them to use this innate dislike to mock and belittle the cultures and beliefs of others, especially those who look different from them. He causes them to think that racism is a natural and normal way of thinking, and that they should not be tolerant or respectful of diversity. That explains why many people over the centuries have tried to fight off racism and color prejudice in different parts of the world and in different ways. But they can fight it all they want. It doesn't ever goes away because Lucifer is behind it. That's really wild, I must say. It goes to show that no matter what people do, people like Martin Luther Jr., Albert Einstein, Muhammad Ali, and even Nelson Mandela cannot totally exterminate racism 100% from America and other parts of the world. That's crazy. Lucifer is also responsible for greed and excessive hunger for material and worldly possessions in the world today. He increases the sinful desire for more than one needs or deserves, such as money, power, fame, or property. He often uses this weakness by offering or exposing the greed of humans, especially those who are wealthy or influential. He also uses greed to make men think they can acquire or enjoy whatever they want without regard for the needs or rights of others. He causes them to believe that greed is good and rewarding and that they should not be content with what they've got. Gluttony, too, is another antic of the devil. He makes a lot of men gluttons, causing them to overindulge in eating and pleasure sinfully. He makes them see the wastefulness of food, drink, or other substances as a normal thing to do. He often does this by encouraging the gluttony of men and women, especially by making them addicted to unhealthy eating habits. He also uses this mindset to control them into consuming and abusing whatever they like, without regard for the effects or limits of their body, and makes them not have any regard for the one who gave them their riches. This is because Lucifer does not want humans to be moderate or disciplined. These are turbulent disclosures. With all the chaos going on right now, I'm not sure the world can take it any further. You know, what I really hope for is that the weight of darkness doesn't completely swallow up the little light that's left in the world, that there's some resistance that we can mount against Lucifer and his agents. When implementing all of these policies, do you ever face any resistance or pushback? And if so, from who? One group in particular try to oppose every policy I try to implement. I would be so much further along in my agenda if it wasn't for them. Really? So what group is that? Those pesky, born-again, Jesus followers. They're a real thorn in my side. Every generation, they come together and try to dismantle one of my signature policies. Now, I've convinced half of the world that Jesus didn't exist and the other half that he wasn't divine. But I can't seem to convince them. They seem hell-bent on telling everybody about him and spreading his message. Unlike we humans, Lucifer is not tired, nor does he ever plan to give up. He can only stop once his kingdom is populated and the kingdom of heaven totally depopulated. That is why he causes laziness and negligence among believers today. They keep arguing and fighting over mere doctrines not realizing that Lucifer is preventing them from seeing their true potential. He makes most Christians think that being spiritually lazy is comfortable and easy, and that they should not be active or ambitious, and don't have to seek God's help. Well, you know what? This concludes our interview. Uh, I want to say thank you for an open, honest, pretty frank discussion with me. Uh, is there any last words you would like to leave with our viewing audience? Yes. I'd like to take this moment and give a special thank you to two groups of people. First, I want to say thank you to all my followers. 
You are the hands and feet of my administration and we could do nothing without you. Keep up the good work, spread my message. And second, I'd like to say thank you to the divided church. I love the way you argue and use your passions to fight amongst each other. Keep up the good work. There's really no rush to tell people about Jesus. You all have plenty of time. That's pretty sad what he said at the end. It points to the fact that the majority of us Christians believe that we still have time, so we choose to do very little about information such as this. But that shouldn't be your case after watching this. Lucifer's interview is fictional, no doubt, but it raises some moral and spiritual questions. It challenges the traditional views of Satan, exploring the themes of free will, sin, temptations, pride, lust of the flesh, and greed. This is a message for you out there. If you're a child of God, stand your ground no matter what and give Lucifer a tough resistance. As Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy, fight the good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith. I hope this video helps you understand Lucifer's interviews better. Please reach down to the comments section and let me know your take on what's been discussed in this interview. See you later.